Hey guys, my name is Josie Elizardo. I'm an ME technical specialist with Autodesk. And the following blog post is going to be focused around the extension 1 release for Max 2015 and also how to take full advantage of the Entertainment Creation Suite Ultimate. So in Max 2015 extension 1, we've added support for Open Subdiv. Um, Open Subdiv is a technology developed by Pixar. It's essentially a subdivision smoothing algorithm, much in the same way that TurboSmooth and MeshSmooth is except that it offers a lot of benefits that those two tools don't use, such as a, stream, a more streamlined workflow, um, increased performance, increased frame rates for animations. Um, so we'll take a look at how to set that up a little bit later. And also we're gonna look at the new support for the Alembic file format, which is essentially a data format for exchanging geometric and animated data across applications. So the, um, the overarching workflow that we're going to be looking at is uh, we're going to look at how we can use open subdiv to quickly create some models. And then we're going to take those models and bring them into Maya and use those models with the Bifrost engine to simulate some liquids. And then we'll take those liquids and bring them back inside of Max via Alembic. So that's sort of what we're going to be looking at today. Um, and also before I do get started, there are a couple of videos that I would highly recommend watching. Um, these are videos produced by Neil Blevins, and you can find them on his website or on the link below. Um, these are videos around Open Subdiv, and they're just a really good way to get started, a really good um, overview of the feature um, itself. So like I said, I really recommend you guys uh, taking a look at those videos. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so here are the two models that we're going to be working with. We have a low-res model of a sink and a low-res model of a faucet. And we want to start increasing the quality of these models by having some more rounded off edges, some filleted edges, and just have an overall more organic and natural um, looking objects. And so to do so, um, traditionally in Max, we would have to add a turbo smooth modifier or a mesh smooth modifier and start adding a lot of edges to be able to create those nice um, filleted edges. Uh, now, you know, not only is doing that somewhat you know, tedious and cumbersome, adding all those edges takes a lot of time and is a lot of work. Uh, but you're adding a lot of, you know, a lot of complexity to your models. Um, and then when you want to make changes to your models after to maybe to the degree of fillet of, of a certain edge, I need to start moving a lot of vertices around, a lot of uh, edges around. Um, it just gets hairy really, really fast. So with open sub, uh, that's not the case. So the way you um, define uh, um, filleted edges in, in open subdiv is instead of adding um, all, all those supporting edges that are generally required, you instead just select the edges that you want to be filleted and define a fillet value. With the um, open subdiv, we call these crease values. So essentially, it's as simple as that. You select the edges that you want to be creased and you give it a crease value. Um, a much more streamlined and a much more straightforward approach to, um, to modeling. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to set this up. I'm going to select all my objects and apply the appropriate modifiers to get this done. So the first one we want here is the Creset modifier. Um, so the Creset modifier is where we are going to define which edges have which crease value to them. And there's a lot of other workflows in here that we're going to explore. Um, and then of course the next thing we need is an open subdiv modifier. So you'll see that at first glance, it behaves very much like the TurboSmooth modifier in the way it does its smoothing and the way it presents you with, the, with, with its options. But keep in mind that if this was a more complex scene with maybe animated characters or animated or deforming meshes, um, that open subdiv would, um, would perform much better than TurboSmooth. You'd have an increased frame rate um, and just general uh, viewport responsiveness um, overall. Um, so what we're going to actually explore in this particular workflow is the Creset workflow with Open Subdiv. So if I come into my uh, Creset modifier here um, and come into uh, Subobject Edge Mode, you see I see my low-res cage here. Now the way this works is I need to essentially select the edges that I want to define a crease value and give it a crease value. Now you would think that doing so would be quite uh, tedious as well or it would take some time because I do have a lot of edges here to select and this is a pretty simple model you can imagine with a more complex model that that would take a lot of time. Well, luckily with the Creset modifier, that's not uh, the case. Instead, we have a um, very handy select by face angle tool here, which essentially allows us to define a certain threshold, a certain angle threshold um, to uh, create a nice selection of edges. And so by defining a 90 degree threshold and hit the select button, you see that the selection that I have in my viewport now is a pretty good representation of everything that I would want to have creased. That's not perfect, and we're going to fix this in just a second, but this gets you a good 90% of the way there. So first thing I'm going to do is deselect my sink because I want to work on my faucet specifically. 
And what I'm going to do now is just add the missing edges to this selection. So I know that around the spout here, I'm missing those edges. I need to add them. I need to go ahead and add uh, these edges around uh, the, the spout here. I'm going to do a shift select to ring around the selection. I'm also going to come here and add these edges that are missing. These essentially are all edges that were not captured uh, by that 90 degree uh, threshold that we defined earlier. But you see within just a couple of seconds and a couple of selections, my selection is pretty much complete. I'm going to come down here to uh, the preset uh, creator here. I'm going to give it a name, call it faucet. Say create preset. And now I have this handy little spinner that um, defines how creased these edges will be. So maybe a value of 0.35 is pretty sufficient. And you see within just a couple of clicks and a couple of seconds, I've turned this a very low res model into a high res hard body model with nice billeted edges, um, all without having to add a whole bunch of edges and therefore increasing the complexity of my base model. So that's really the benefit, uh, the huge benefit of, uh, of Open Subdiv. Uh, we're going to do the same thing with the sink and explore a couple of other workflows. So I'm going to hit select here again, deselect my faucet this time. And we're going to add these missing edges again. So these edges here are, are missing. So we're going to just add them to our selection. And then we're going to create again another uh, selection set here. We're going to call it sink. Say create set and give it a, a value of 0.3. Now you see our, our sync set is done. However, we have some issues. And I like these here on purpose to illustrate some things that we can do to quickly fix this. So what's happening here is that these specific edges also need to be creased. And I'm just going to make sure that I didn't select anything unnecessarily. There we go. Four edges are selected as seen here. What we can do is with these four edges selected, we can right click on the sync button here and say add selection to set. So now these four edges will have will be part of this sync crease set, therefore having this crease value to them. That's a really nice way to get uh, things done. Also, another issue we have here is that our sync hole is now a square. That's because the edges of the sinkhole are part of the sink set. So what we can do to fix this really, really quickly is we can right click on our uh, sink set here, say select elements and set. This is gonna se select all the edges in the, in the, uh, of the model that are part of this set. And then we just need to deselect the um, edges that we don't want. So we're gonna come into an orthographic view. I'm gonna go ahead and deselect all those. So now my only selection are those edges that I want to remove from this set. With those edges selected, I can right click on sync and say subtract selection from set. And now my sync hole just turned into a cylindrical shape again, the way I expected it to be. So there you go. Within, uh, again, just a few clicks, uh, we have a very, a very, you know, much nicer model than we started with. I'm going to come in my top view here. I'm just going to maybe increase my iterations by one. Um, and at this point, I'm pretty much ready to send these models into Maya. So what I'm going to do is select all, come into export, export selected. I'm going to overwrite this file right here and just say yes to that. And if you switch back into Maya and do an import, I'm going to import that file right there. And here we have our geometry that we just created in Mac. So the first thing I want to do actually is just apply a new material so we can um, see the models. And it's important to understand that another really great benefit of working with Open Subdiv is that this data is persistent across um, applications such as Maya and uh, Mudbox as well. So the data that I uh, entered in Max um, is still present in Maya. So when I select this sync, for example, and come into the um, smoothing, you see that it's using the Open Subdiv Catmull Clark uh, algorithm as I defined it in Max. Uh, furthermore, if I select all these objects and come into Windows um, Explorer, Creaset Explorer, and say Edit, Create, uh, Set, Creaset from Mesh, you see that the two Creasets that I created in Max um, are still here and are still, still persistent. There is a difference in the way, um, in the range of the values. So in Max, uh, we are presented with a range from 0 to 1. Um, and in Maya, it's from 1 to 10, but a value of 3.5 obviously represents 0 0.35 in max. I think the conversion is, is pretty logical. If I were to select, for example, one of these and say right click on it and say select node, I can come into my attribute editor and I can actually change my crease value directly from within the attribute editor. So these are all values that were uh, persistent across the interop process. So that's uh, all I wanted to show you as far as Open Subdiv is concerned. The next steps um, in the next video you're going to see is how to set up a Bifrost simulation using these geometries. 
And then later on, we're going to take that and bring it back into Max via Alembic. So uh, stay tuned for the next video.